Welcome back, Diecast Collectors. Today we are looking at True 164 Scale Auto World Premium Release 3 and 4. Two full sets, that's six vehicles each and in two different colors for a total of 12 vehicles per set. 24 cars getting reviewed in this video, already opened up and ready to go. As well, we're going to check out some of the cool features of the packaging and specifically brand new models of the 1977 Lincoln Continental. As well, we're going to compare chase cars or ultra reds as they're known from yesteryear. These are older Auto World ultra red cars alongside three very lucky finds that I made while opening up nine sealed cases of Auto World. Yeah, that's a lot of cars. Unfortunately, I lost the footage that I made of that while I was filming the first cut for this video. It was corrupted, but we're not going to lose sleep about that. We're going to keep going and check on all of these awesome cars, which uh, is going to save a little bit of time that they're already opened up. And uh, side by side comparison, both color variations here. I had to get a couple extras of these brand new Lincoln Continentals. Another favorite, of course, of mine is those Nova Wagons, the Chevy fleet side pickup trucks. And I really do like the Dodge Stealth. Even the modern cars are awesome, Corvette and Camaro. And of course, we have a whole bunch more over here in release three with the Chevy Suburban, Chevy uh, Cheyenne pickup, I think, or maybe it's another fleet side. The Toyota Supra, Dodge Challenger, Ford F-150, Jeep JK, and uh, I think that's it for release three. So some very cool castings in both of these series cars and lots of cool little factoids about the vehicles on the packaging. Everything right down to their factory paint color to some special facts on the vehicles, premium facts, how many cars or castings were actually produced by Auto World and just a whole bunch more details on the back, which we'll take a quick peek at. Let's get started by looking at release four cars and maybe not in any particular order as they are numbered one through six on the bottom right alongside the car's name, the uh, release number here, version code for the color and uh, the other facts as I was saying, this one being about the weight of the car being uh, over 4,800 pounds when new in 1977 and for this one, uh, the length of the car, 19.4 feet, making it one of the longest cars of 1977. Just a really cool casting and uh, quite welcome to see. Some changes on the back of the card art from release 4 to the previous release that we saw, release 3. And also, actually, for the first time in a couple years, I do believe, just a minor change versus talking about the Auto World mission here. Uh, and then, of course, there's the vehicles in the release that you've got, you purchased, as well as previous releases, release two in this case with pictures. Um, now they've got some more, some more going on here. You can still see what is in the current release that you're purchasing, as well as the previous release in this case, re uh, release three. But you've also got this uh, very cool little Ultimate Auto World checklist. So this guy named Wyatt Davis has been working directly with Auto World for years, building a comprehensive, simple to use, apparently online catalog of every Auto World 164 scale casting from 2014 through to today. So I'm going to definitely check that out. There it is, awcollector.com. Uh, looks like they've got some screen images and things like that. So good job for uh, round two in getting that guy's uh, you know, collection and pictures and whatever's library up and running on there. It's no small feat, as I can tell you, I've done that with Hot Wheels before. I've never, I've never shared it publicly as there's already lots of documentation on Hot Wheels, but I thought that was pretty cool. So I'm gonna check that out. I should mention here, I'm not sponsored by Auto World. Uh, I do buy all these cars with my own money from a couple different shops. One being AureliaDieCast.com and the other one being uh, WholesaleCollectors.com. So if you're wondering where to buy them and you can't find them in your local stores, I suggest you go online and worst case, buy them on eBay and hopefully the shipping isn't too rough. So that's pretty cool about those cars. Um, we're going to look at these loose, so I'm not going to spend too, too much time here. I will bring forth the Chase, of the Chase version of this car. So the card art is going to be the same. This will be found in the version B case, as you can tell by the black Continental, not the blue one. 
And uh, Chase version features a white painted base, red tires, uh, chromey red interior, and of course the metallic red paint, which Auto World has been using since the beginning on their ultra red Chase models. As we can see here on this 1976 Cadillac Coupe de Ville, although it does look a little darker, might have been some slight, well, maybe not. Could just be the lighting. This model was released in 2013, so quite a bit of a difference there. While we've got both these cars side by side, you can see that in the olden days, they had realistic looking wheels and base still being unpainted metal. Interior was unchanged. And actually, I do have the regular version of this car right here. So you can see the difference was only that metallic red paint back in 2013. Same true for this uh, car and driver version of the Pontiac Firebird, which I think was originally yellow or white or something like that. So some big changes to the chase cars, I guess. I haven't really been keeping track of that as I don't normally find chase cars. Uh, unless you buy sealed cases, it's next to impossible. And so the uh, the premium facts are only going to relate to the black car, not the uh, metallic red car. And in this case here, we'll just switch on over to the 63 Chevy 2 Nova 400 wagon. Wow, that's a mouthful of a name. Oh my goodness. So we've got it here in the original colors. And as you can see, the Chase models on those cards. Um, this one here is the enamel white version in release A. Looks pretty nice. It's got some premium factoids. Um which you can pause on. I don't think we're going to have time to read every premium factoid. The back of the packaging is, I did it again, it's going to be the same. And uh, here is the factoids on the silver blue poly version. Nice looking casting. Is there a difference between these two chase cars? I personally don't think so. I was unable to find any difference when looking at them. So uh, if there is one and you guys that are more familiar with the ultra reds of auto world I want to chime in in the comments if there are if there are any differences i'm missing that would be appreciated so that was number five and i guess i should also mention that they have the uh this kind of series at the top which is all sometimes different luxury cars modern muscle uh luxury cruisers i should say and then we've got muscle trucks which we'll look at in a minute Got those two Camaros, 2019 Chevy Camaro ZL1. Premium facts on this one. And of course the addition, how many were created. And now for the white one. Pretty cool. 6.2 liter V8 in that car. Let's look at the trucks now. Number two in the series. It'd be pretty cool to get an ultra red of one of these. This is the most of the uh, vehicles created that we've seen in this set, 18,798. Not really sure why the camera's struggling so much. Built-in obsolescence, I like to chalk it up to. 84 Chevy truck. And uh, this one looks really good in the light dark blue poly two-tone. You'll see these a whole lot better out of their packaging, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. I think that was, a, oh, one last car to look at here in the series, still in the packaging, is the 2020 Chevy Corvette. And uh, official new mid-engine C8 Corvette. These actually do have an opening cowling on the back, which is quite cool. So I think we've, uh, I think we've looked at the packaging enough there for release four. We still have all of release three to look at. Uh, let's just go ahead and check out the rolling of these cars seems to be pretty good i did have an opportunity to shine them up best i could and adjust any tires that were a little bit off and uh, the cars look really good i was unsure if the hood opens on this model because it is a separate cast piece however i uh, picked at it almost to the point of uh, endangering the paint and or my eye in case the knife snapped so i gave up i was unable to open the hood i think it is just a separately cast piece i could be wrong I'm not sure. If it isn't, it's very hard to, to get open. And here is the metallic blue one. You can see a little bit easier. Beautiful, good lines on there, though. It's It's got great details. 
the solid cast bumpers, incredible paint jobs, and uh, like all the all the little tampos on it or whatever you want to call them. So that is quite a land yacht. And how does that car, the longest of 77, compare to a 76 Cadillac Coupe de Ville? Well, I thought you'd be curious, so I put these two on their nose. And let's see. Oh, we've lost the focus. I would say, are we straight and lined up here? I'd say they're almost the same. If anything, the Cadillac might be longer. Now, the Cadillac is from 76. I'm not sure if there was any model change from 77. I guess there was, or maybe these are just so close it's hard to tell. Anyways, that's why I pulled that one out. I've also got this Buick LeSabre wagon. It's a very long Auto World casting. And it is definitely longer. What year was this one from? I don't exactly remember. I think it was 75. So some pretty good land yachts and luxury cruisers from Auto World over the years. The Chevy Nova Wagon. Great details on this one. Engine bay, highly detailed and painted. And check out how clear and good those windows are. Great fitting hood. Here it is in the baby uh, metallic blue. The black steely wheels. Which one do you guys like better? I think they're both great, but I really like those steely black wheels. You just don't see them very often. Not sure which order those were. No, it was like that. Yeah. All right. Now on to the pickup truck. This one has a drop tailgate. And the bumper is a plastic piece, which for some reason has a bit of a sad smile. Or frown, I guess. Not a smile. Smile if it was upside down. But maybe it was just uh, put too hard to work. Who knows? The paint job says otherwise. Got a few misshapen white walls. Not too many, though. I did uh, sacrifice one duplicate vehicle to make some of the white walls acceptable on these trucks. As for some reason, they had some pretty misshapen ones. That was not so bad, but still. I uh, surprised, because I don't remember this being a problem with Auto World vehicles in the past. So I hope the... Uh, Hope they didn't source their tire manufacturer out to the same company that Greenlight does. And also, some of them, like, they roll, but they just got a bit of a kind of a clunkier sound, and some of the wheels are giving me a little bit of trouble. I blame that on the tires as well, but great-looking models. The wheels are well cast. You can see all the way through the rims on this Dodge Stealth. Again, we've got to sever the cast hood, but unable to get it open. And this one had a bit of a smudge on the fender. Not really sure why. Straight of the package. Also, look at that. One of the wheels is, uh, I think it's just chipped. I thought it was broken at first, but I think it's just got a black chip on it. So let me fix that up, I guess. The Corvette, pretty cool. Got the back cowling opening up. And uh, some good details in there as well. Painted taillights. I noticed some of these cars in the store weren't quite closing perfectly crisply. So keep an eye on that when you're buying them. You have an opportunity. But here, that was the other problem. Was this car here. This car does not have rolling wheels in the back. The tire selection and the wheel choice that Auto World has used here is simply too large for the fender wells. You know that the fender wells are too small. They're just crimping the tire the exact same spots on both of these models. I mean, you can see they do turn a little bit, but when put under weight, it just locks. It can't do anything with it. So even its own body weight, some issues there. Surprising that they don't test these things on a few sample runs before they actually commit to producing 15,000 of them. Um, if it was my auto, if it was my little die cast manufacturer company, I'd probably do a sufficient run of all the cars to make sure that issues were minimal. 
given the price range of the cars for most people, since many, like me, have to buy them uh, not straight from the producer of the cars, so through secondary markets in, in many cases. Camaro looks good. We've got great looking wheels on the Camaro. Um, nice paint job. And it does feature an opening hood as well. Ooh, wow, I just about tore that hood off. Careful. Pretty sweet. Not really sure why the taillights are silver. Are they supposed to be silver? Maybe they look silver when they're not engaged. I would have thought red would look a little better. But anyways, why am I nitpicking so much? Love the models. Love the Auto World models. Uh, so that was all of release five that or four release four that you just looked at and uh, now we're going to go look at release three so we do need to change the background a bit as it did not have room to put all of release three cars here i'm going to switch out these release four cars all right the scenery has been changed up slightly now we've got release three cars in the background again these are 2021 release so you've already seen these most likely just filling out my collection and uh, thought that maybe if you wanted to see them or haven't seen them yet you'd stick around and check these out but uh, i'm only opening up half of the release three version a cars so that included the uh, suburban the pickup and the other pickup missing was the jeep the challenger and the supra but we do have them in the packaging to look at and uh, we'll check out the packaging first before we look at these models up close now can you imagine how long it would take if i had to read all these that's why i do say pause and read on them if you want uh we just don't have enough time to make these videos a reasonable length whilst reading each of the packaging items but uh these are the cars i guess i should take a closer look these are the ones you're not going to see loose so you've got the black toyota supra Nice chromey rims. Looks like a good model. We'll check out the red one a little closer. And the Indigo Blue Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat. Looks great. Definitely got to get a second one of that because I really do want to open it up. And I've got quite a few Challengers opened up. Top speed of 199 miles an hour and some other interesting information. If only the camera could decide uh, whether it wants to function or not properly. And then we've got the Hyper Green Jeep. Hyper Green. Well, that's a cool color, right? Eh? Wow, what's going on here, camera? Seriously. Samsung Galaxy 20. Maybe uh, don't buy one if you're doing some close-up filming like I'm doing because, whew, I don't know. It seems worse than my old Samsung Galaxy 10. That's my phone rant for this video. Something I'm doing wrong. I'm in a room with about 3,000 watts of lighting. A tripod and uh, another light just behind my shoulder here so I'm not really sure what the issue is but let's check this uh, Suburban out and that's awesome I love this casting red that's a little unimaginable red what color would you like your 66 Suburban sir red cool and uh wow okay the 83 chevy silverado 10 fleet side so lots of different options on these trucks from back in the day uh the 83 featured a fully redesigned two level grill with eight horizontal openings so this would be a new grill for the auto world truck see this is a new casting new casting that's what they mean when they say new casting sometimes doesn't mean the whole casting is new it could be a, a just a subtle change like the grill work. I don't have the older version of this truck to show you a comparison in this video, but I'll be sure to show you in a future video. So that's neat. Uh, this one, well, it's the packaging, but I already opened it because the packaging had a big rip in it. So we can check that out. And if it weren't for that, well, then there'd only be two versions from version A to look at. But I did open it up purely because of that. So can't have that. And, uh, of course, we now we're into version B. So all these vehicles you're about to see, the next six, you can see loose as well. And so we'll just pay, pay attention to what the premium facts say. Oh, my God. All right. What color is this one? Saddle Poly. Maybe it's just too shiny. 
I can't figure it out, guys. I've done so many cuts on this video. I'm just sorry if I've lost my patience slightly with the camera. I just can't keep doing the same video over and over again. This will be like a total of three cuts for this video. And uh, you probably won't see Auto World for a little while after that. At least until I get the second version of Release 5. I've got version A, just not version B. And so let's check this one. Can we get a focus? Okay. F8 Green Metallic. Pretty cool. And there's the red. Uh, super, super red on the Supra. Super nameplate. First appears a trim level on the Toyota Celica. Does that help? Maybe it's maybe it's over here. It's cameras thinks that we're I don't know why on earth it would think that we want to focus on this little bit when 80% of the screen is what we're trying to look at. Why is that? Why are you doing that? Okay, so there you go. Cool looking Jeep, eh? Let's go in for a closer look. So I think it's pretty safe to say this will be one of my least polished videos you've seen in a while. And uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna upload it anyways because I do want to get these models shown. They're some of my absolute favorites. Like I said, it's a shame that the camera hasn't been working out. The footage didn't work out in the first round with the uh, ultra red chase finds. But at least we can check out the models nice and clearly. It's almost like the camera is saying you gotta open the models to look at them. Don't want to see them in the packaging, but you know I like to look at them in the packaging as well. Let's just do a side by side on those two Fords. I mean, check out the interiors; just crazy details on these. The base is painted black, and on these Ford trucks, they really are. Oh, that one's got some wheel issues. Well, that one rolls good. I didn't notice that when I was doing getting ready for this film. That's all right. We've got the Jeep. Now, of course, we've got the hyper yellow ones not coming out of the package, but check out all the details on the uh, Overland package here. Jerry cans, shovels, fog lights, all the usual ultra cool details that Auto World incorporates into their models. Some big tires. And the Challenger. Much easier to see out of the package being that dark green. There's the little Hellcat on the fender. A Supra. Nice, clean looking wheels. And again, super detailed interior. Really got that part figured out perfectly. We have a lumpy rear wheel. That's because an axle has been uh, driven into the wheel, not in the perfect center. So it kind of makes a weird vibration. Challenger's working good, and so is the Suburban. Now, the Suburban, I can't open these hoods. They just don't work. If you try to open them, it pulls away from the firewall. You get a big, ugly gap, and or the hood could literally get sheared off. So, something Auto World needs to work on. I don't remember them having this problem with this casting when it was first released. It was a bit stiff and limited in its range of opening, but... Now it just feels like it's going to break off. So I'm not sure what changed there, but I definitely need to check the uh, die cast machinery and see if something is wrong. So this one kind of opens, but you can see it's crooked. It wants to open more on one side versus the other, which uh, is not ideal. There's one of those misshapen white wall tires that I thought only green light was going to have problems with, but nice looking Chevy. Check out the engine on this one. Rad hose. Great looking models though, guys. The windows are always nice and clear uh, and shiny. Paints good and clean. Castings are well, well fitted. Good functionality. All metal. No hidden plastic bases getting thrown in. Uh, here we have an axle. They got the wrong axle in the front of this truck. It should be significantly narrower. I think that's just a, an anomaly because if you look at this one, it doesn't have that problem. So almost looks like a back axle got used on the front of this truck on that particular model, whereas this one has a shorter axle on the front. Really like the uh, brown and beige two-tone. Looks good on this truck, very period correct. Definitely a sample of that landing in the junkyard. Well, maybe, I don't know which one will. They're all so great cars. You can, you can put these in any sort of diorama. They look 
fantastic. And, uh, well, sorry for any of the rant part you didn't like in this video, but, you know, that's how they go sometimes. If you're after any of these, happy hunting. Take care of yourselves.